Well, Greg, I really do appreciate you being here. Steve Ranch, who's the uh, chairman of, um, <clears throat> oh, what is it you're chairman of? The, uh, the, the chairman of the club, club, yeah, the girls, Kentucky Lacrosse yeah, Umpire girls Board, Official the girls. Association. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he said he was going to be on, um, and I've kind of been waiting to see if anything had come through. Um, well, I'll get to I'll get to game fees and stuff like that. Um, are you all? Well, of course you all are ready. Uh, I've got seven oh two, so that's. Uh, yep, I, I would just line. go ahead. Yeah, that's way past the line of departure. Yep. So we'll we'll get going. Let me get yep. this thing off and um okay there's a there's there's me <clears throat> okay let me uh lacrosse uh, well i'm your assigner i'm the commonwealth league assigner i'm also involved in some other things at usa lacrosse i'm kind of greg was the boys coordinator in kentucky i was the girls coordinator for officials development so uh, i have my fingers in my very inexperienced fingers in several pies. Um, USA Lacrosse is rebranded now, in case you need to know. So if you ever try to get on the website, don't go to uslacrosse.org. Go to usalacrosse.com. There's some leadership changes. I think it was all amicable, but uh, there's some uh, top leadership changes uh, and um, new logo. Um, but everything continues on. Most of the most of the people I go to uh, on the official side are still um, uh, still the same. And uh, Greg can probably tell you these are two separate sports: the boys and the girls that are joined together at the national level. So, uh, and so a lot of the um, hierarchy up in, at national is uh, is the same. All right. Um, in case you know, and Greg, you can speak to this. Uh, Commonwealth League requires coaches to be certified. And um, so you need to be a member of USA Lacrosse and you can go to whatever the coaches side. I don't know that that well and get certified. Um, ran into an interesting, uh, not naming names, just a, a weird rule situation. Um, well, let me just say that it would behoove you to have, just in case, another coach on your staff who is certified. Otherwise, if for some reason the head coach gets, you know, uh, um, carded and uh, removed from the game, the game's over unless you have a certified coach uh, on the bench. Is that correct, Greg? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. So I, you always that, have to have a certified coach. So if, right. if the head coach gets ejected and there's no assistant who has a level one certification, that game is over. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't mean to start off with bad news or I, I just, just in case, right. Uh, you'd rather solve a problem before it is a problem. Uh, all right. Uh, if you go, if you click on the coach thing, uh, there's the certification um, right in there where my little cursor is pointing or the big arrow. So I'm sure it's a lot of interesting videos to watch. I uh, shouldn't have said it that way, but so resources, USA Lacrosse, I'll be posting this video on my little um, unofficial website, uh, sliderlax.com. Um, I, it's primarily for officials, but it's also not this video, but it's also, I give some information that's broad and I'll try to update some, there's some interesting rules changes, uh, which I'm really not wanting to address. I mean, I will, if there's questions about them, but that's not my role here, uh, today. Um, 2022 NFHS girls lacrosse rules book, um, you, you coaches have heard of the rules book, haven't you? I'm being funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> they change it every year. Um, I would recommend getting a copy of it. I know officials get copies free if they when they join U.S. Lacrosse, USA Lacrosse. It's never um, free. They, 
they get it because they pay for their membership. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Never free. Nothing. It's like my free long distance uh, calling on my land. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Um, the training manual, I can get you PDF copies of that. That is a good resource. It is required reading for the officials. It's recommended to coaches. It's a good way to uh, get an insight into how officials are supposed to interpret rules. It's a resource book. It's not a read it cover to cover because it's eight and a half by 11, um, 120 pages. So it's not something you're gonna sit down and, and read a lot. Uh, every year I, I put out a little um, everything that got you frustrated about lacrosse, a um, little ebook or book. And if your parents want that, that's fine. That'll be available. But I keep the cost as low as possible on that. Uh, so I'm not making any money. It's not a career change. <laughs> Let's look at our calendar and Greg, check over this as we go. Um, uh, the lacrosse convention, I don't know if coaches do that, but let me, let me make it small. Okay. Um, I'll be there. I'm a presenter, um, uh, but uh, I know there's a coach's side to it. Greg, you have anything to add to that? I, I don't even know if you're going to be there. Oh, you are you going to be there? No, unfortunately, I have a box tournament I'm refing that weekend. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, I know there's... A few to me, I think I think what I'm going to do is sometime in January. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to have a deadline for a, for game for games on the master schedule. Okay, good. Okay, so is there a, is there a date when you would want to choose, John, where we have a deadline? Well, um, let's back into it. Uh, I, I won't have, I won't know for certain, 100%, what officials I've got until February 26th. Wow. Of course, and that's the first game is the 27th. So wow. maybe uh, I could make tentative assignments February 1. Okay. So sometime toward the third week of January, I'm going to say everybody needs to have their their games into the master schedule. So you can upload that into into uh, Arbiter. Yeah, and I've got to do that. Man, there is a way to uh, for you all to send me some sort of file online, and it would automatically upload. But if, this might be the last year we're doing. Thing, I don't know, whatever, uh, until KHSAA takes over. So let's just keep doing it the way we've been doing it. And I, I end up doing and en manually entering every every game, so which is fine. I mean, I'm retired, so I can do that. Okay. Um, and, and I'll put out something to all the teams to give them a date. Okay. The, uh, the fewer changes, the better. I mean um, – I, we can adapt and adopt and so on, but um, it's easier to lock down umpires the fewer changes there are. Hey, John, this is Rob Williams of Woodford County. That date yeah. you've got there, uh, we talked about scrimmaging. It wouldn't be official games yet, but it's the weekend before. It's not March 5th. Our, oh, okay. tournament, our tournament's going to be that uh, February weekend before the 25th ah, through the okay. 27th. Okay, so I will need – wow. Um, see all my new well here all my all the new officials won't be rated and without a rating they are not certified uh, they can be registered but but if we're uh, scrimmaging if it's not official games is that an issue anyway that's your is that your jamboree yes correct. we don't have availability of the field that we got yeah. okay um, well uh, it probably doesn't have any impact on you all. The impact for us is it provides the certification. I know for sure provides um, a broader insurance, uh, both injury and liability for umpires. Now I could probably still 
Yeah, if that's what, what you say? What date is that? Does it well, include it's the, it's the, it's the It's the last weekend in February, so it's the yeah. 25th, 6th, and 7th. Oh, wow. Okay, well, the 20th, wow. Um, yeah, there's a problem because rating days the 26th, so just about every umpire will be tied up on the 20, the afternoon of the 26th in Louisville and Sacred Heart. No, okay, I, we can take uh, that offline. I didn't know that. So. Well, okay. let, yeah, let you and I let you and I talk, and we may need to loop Chris in the block in on this. Chris is the uh, training coordinator, so uh, but he's he's driven by when Sacred Heart School is available. They've been very kind to help us out with that. So there's a glitch right there that we need to we need to iron out. So, John, is there a way that that you could have a rating day for Lexington officials here? Well, on that's twenty fifth, twenty sixth. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Or do ratings there at the Wood at the Woodford County Jamboree? Yeah. Um, yeah. The the pro it, this is just a, a problem. I don't mean to get bogged down in this, but this is a problem of where certain levels of officials are. And the Louisville has the more experienced pool of officials or a pool of more experienced officials, more level three officials. So I would have to, you know, they would have to opt to get to Lexington. We probably couldn't do two events, one in Louisville, one in Lexington. Um, I, I, I just, uh, uh, Rob, you and Chris and I, and maybe Greg need, well, uh, Greg, you may not want to be involved in that conversation, but we, we need to just figure out what we got to do. Um, can we table that? And, sure, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll forward, I, yeah, I'm table that. It'll I'm, get, I'm it'll get solved. It'll get solved. I'm just trying to think of how to solve it. Um, and I need, I need Chris Niblock involved with this. Um, did I just see Steve Rance getting on? I thought I saw Steve's iPhone. I got a shot of Rob being asleep. Okay. Well, it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Can Rob. you hear me? I can, who are you? Yeah, this is Steve. Oh, hey, Steve. Uh, you just did you listening. hear our conversation about the issue with the uh, Woodford County Jamboree and rating day? Is Chris right. is yeah, projecting? Yeah, it sounds it? like it sounds like we just gather the um, all the angles, put them yeah. together, and sit down and think it out. Sure. Okay, all right, we'll move forward. Just get the information. That we'll have yeah. to, you know, figure it out. Maybe it's a week before it, or but right. I I can see the issue with uh, the difference between Louisville and Lexington. Although it it seemed like there's a possibility of why we couldn't do one separately in Lexington. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Rules interpretation meeting. Uh, there's one in Louisville and one in Lexington. I can't remember which is which. 22, 29 January. So those are, I, do, I can't even remember what day of the, that might be a Sunday. Um, uh, Christian Academy uh, icebreaker. There were a couple of Commonwealth teams that came to that. Uh, I, I think they had positive experiences. Uh, Carl, do you want to say anything about your tournament in Owensboro? Well, I, I'm not sure if, if this is the first time I've held something like this, if I should really technically be calling it an invitational. I mean, there's no like follow on games. Based okay. on I really look at this. I'm about an hour from Bowling Green. I'm also within an hour of all the Evansville team. And it was just a chance to, Kind of meet them up. I'm actually using it as a as a, uh, a fundraiser. So what I've got is four uh, Evansville area teams and four uh, Kentucky teams, uh, three the three Bowling Green teams as well as Central Harden, and we tried to get as many games as anybody everybody wanted, and everyone seems satisfied with the resulting schedule. So right now we have um, eighteen or eight games with the Kentucky team playing in an Indiana team. Okay, well that's neat. All right. Um, and I think we can cover that with uh, officials. You ask me to assign it. I think we're good for it. We'll awesome. have to talk. Um, well, well, we'll talk. <laughs> <Some more. laughs> yeah, um, <right. laughs> 
Sacred Heart Academy, Braveheart is April 20 to 24, and that is a big black hole that sucks in every official and even in surrounding states, well, not every in surrounding states, but every official that's available in Kentucky is usually there. Um, so hopefully, Greg, we can kind of, I usually can sneak a few people who don't want to go from Lexington to Louisville, you know, to some Lexington games, but I, I'm not sure how I would be getting getting fr uh, people from Louisville to Bowling Green or to E-Town. That's just the. Uh, yeah, let, let's let's look at I'll look at a date on the master schedule, see what we got. Yeah, we'll go from there. You you officiated at Braveheart a couple of days, didn't you, last year, Greg? Oh, it was it was a bad, bad was poor coaches and players. I did, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Well, it's a it's a, a lot of teams from out of state come. It's a really and, and I think there were some Commonwealth teams in that. Uh, just yes, there were. Uh, FYI, and this is more for umpires that I'm, but uh, but there might be some middle school programs somewhere, Lexington or whatever. Uh, KCD is doing their middle school jamboree. I don't think that I don't know if I got the Commonwealth League postseason correct, but I don't think they're overlapping. So I think we're uh, good to go. Good to go on that. Any questions about calendar? Sorry to bog us down on that, but there were some issues that I needed to be aware of. OK, the assigning process. And that is me. That uh, that is not Homer Simpson. Um, <laughs> I, I end you look up a lot alike, but no. I end up printing up, taking my dining room table and printing out what Greg sends me. It's hilarious, and I got this big. Uh, I'm of the generation that still needs to print things out. Um, umpires will make their availability know, known to me. Coaches will report uh, games to the commissioner. Uh, commissioner reports games to the assigner. I think we've talked about that. Assigner manually enters games into Arbiter. Uh, no umpire is assigned until assigner fee is paid. That's that's my only hook on you guys. So I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound mercenary, but everybody's been good about it. So I probably should have been nice and not left, left that in there. Um, assigner assigns umpires to games. I try to go in two to three week segments just so I have... Uh, victories along the path, intermediate objectives, Carl. And if Brad's there, he'll understand what I'm saying. Um, a signer makes changes as needed. There'll be family emergencies. There'll be um, errors. Hopefully I can limit those, but there will be errors. Um, and there were last year. Uh, you know, we, I think we seem to get through the season fairly well, but uh, any errors I'll take responsibility for. Um, and I think we didn't have to cancel any games. We may have had to move some around or something. Um, coaches check games periodically. Uh, look on Arbiter, make sure, you know, I, the night before your game is not a great time to – a phone call from you saying I don't have any umpires assigned. So try to be proactive on checking games through Arbiter periodically. Um, I think I'll address who needs to be a contact and how to do that with Arbiter in just a minute. The game is played and then umpires are paid by the host team. And I just been telling umpires or will tell new umpires 10 working days. If they don't get something within uh, two weeks, then um, they need to call somebody, call you, call somebody. No! And um, that that's actually a picture of a coach reacting to fees. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think there's been a, a – Steve and Greg, I'll invite you in here in a minute. I think there's been a, a consistent an effort over the years to make – Commonwealth League consistent with Kissel. Um, this is this is what Kissel gets for their assigner, who is Chris Niblock. Uh, varsity schedule for a school one hundred twenty five dollars. JV schedule fifty dollars. If you don't have a JV team, you know, knock off the fifty dollars. Um, if that seems exorbitant. Email Greg. No, email. 
I don't, we'll talk, but I mean, that's the same thing that the schools and many of the schools have freshman teams. So they're playing, paying 125, 50 and 50. Um, I, I, I don't want to say I'm worth it, but a good assigner is worth it. Believe me, there's a lot of work to this. Okay, per umpire, per game fee. Um, Steve and I have been waiting the, and again, this is the attempt to get back to Kissel or not back to, but even with Kissel, um, I'm anticipating the varsity going up to 80 and the JV staying at 50. Now that's only based on what field hockey paid this fall. They went up from $60 to $80 for a varsity game. I know that's a lot of candy bars to sell. And um, uh, Steve or Greg, you want to say anything here? I, I'm well, not all I to... know is they had their meeting today to set today. the game fees. So we will go off of the game fees. So for those of you who don't know, Kissel is the Kentucky Scholastic Lacrosse League, which includes all of uh, Jefferson County, and that includes uh, Oldham County as well. So they're all, they have their own league called Kissel, both on the boys' side and the girls' side. And so we have been working over the last three, four years to get our fees for assigners and games to, to be equivalent to what they're doing. Okay? So that's what you see. Now, the Varsity 80, I, I don't know. We, we, I haven't heard any results of that meeting today as of now. So we'll get back with you about what the game fees are, but we're going to have the same fees for both Kissel and Commonwealth because we've only got one um, association for officials. So we want to make sure that they're getting the same fees, whichever league they work. In. That so a quick question, that, John. Yeah, so we have yeah. game days. We have a varsity game and then a JV game. Hey, Brian. So is it an eight? Are we paying eighty and fifty? Or are we paying eighty and eighty? Over. You broke up a little bit there, um, Steve. I'm going to pull you in. I think he was asking about a combination, you know, varsity JV day. So um, is it eighty plus fifty? Or I I think right. what so we happens have... is. Go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. I was going to say, we haven't met uh, the board we're going to meet soon, but we have to gather, I'm gathering information from here. Um, but uh, usually there's a, a an alteration if there's a, a double header like that. Um, so I don't know what that is or could be. Yeah. But that's a possibility. Yeah, I think Kissel knocks five bucks off of the com combined varsity JV because $5 on each of those game fees, I think it's five, is considered travel. Yes, so, either way, I don't really care, to be honest. Okay. I just want to make sure that we pay, you know, the referees yeah. the, the proper amount. I agree. I'll, go ahead. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. I, I'll come up with a uh, club has got to set this. Uh, so I, I'll come up with an interpretation of what club it is, whether there's a five dollar fee uh, travel fee, which is dropped. You know, if you have a double header, you only travel once. So, well, I'll I'll figure it out. It'll be a hundred. Well, it'll be whatever club sets it is. I was going to give you a number, but I can't really. It's not my not my bailiwick. Um, I've still got to do travel from Louisville and Lexington or Louisville or Lexington to Bowling Green, $50 per assignment. We're almost there at having enough officials, maybe another year or two. Um, but, uh, you know, who, who knows what next year will look like, right, Greg? Um, I, I need to get an experienced official from Louisville or Lexington uh, down to Bowling Green for each assignment. I think, Steve, did you go down there, down to Bowling Green once? Yeah, I went three times. Yeah, three times. 
Good for you. Yeah. He paid city taxes in Bowling Green this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, tournaments are by negotiation. So I'll, you know, uh, uh, I know, for example, uh, the, the Christian Academy uh, uh, icebreaker just has a set fee, $50 per game. Uh, but there's no overtime and it's a running clock and a common clock and so on. Um, Greg, correct me if I'm wrong. Host school pays all umpires. Are we, are we on that? Yes. We good. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so just to make sure everybody understands what we had done is that each team paid one official, but, that has gotten so complex with the uh, Lexington schools going to their green book, et cetera, that we want to do host schools will pay all umpires and host schools, of course, get the gate fee. So that's going to help them pay that. And just about everybody can host. So we, we should be good that way. And it not only gets difficult with the, what what do you call it? The green book, but it's also um, Arbiter does not oh, the, allow. I think it's the red book. Sun. Andy, are you I'm looking ready. at me funny? I got the wrong color, don't I? Yeah, she, yeah I <laughs> thought you were looking at me funny. It's the it's red book. book. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. But I also have heard um, other schools, like we may not end up using Arbiter pay because of the fee associated with it. Um, the volleyball team ended up paying like hundreds of dollars Oh wow! Use arbiter pay, so we may stick to the paper thing. I, I, I cash works for me, but it it there's there's two issues there. One is arbiter is so I can fix the problem, but it triples the work to split bill teams. So I'm not going to do it on arbiter, but so schools that are paying on arbiter have to pay the whole school, or it's got to work out something. I, I guess I just would say that I'm going to hold responsible the host team to pay. Yeah, I was, I was, yes, totally. But I'm, we Lafayette may continue to use the paper because yeah. of hearing from fall sport coaches who were using arbiter pay for the first time that the fees that they ended up paying at the end of the season for using arbiter pay weren't worth it. That's okay. just the yeah. I, there have been glitches in that system too. I, uh, other, uh, you know, so I, well, whatever well, works. And, and then just know that, that, that uh, some of the, some of the dates where there are multiple teams at a school or at a, may do that a little differently. Yeah. Well, so there could E-Town be. town is going to host something yeah. and they may do that with multiple teams a little differently. They may pay. In and then, and then they may pay you all in one lump sum. Brad, I think you're going to do that, aren't you? Brad, yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm doing too many tournaments down in town. Yeah, yeah. And I think Brad, you just collected fees from teams and then paid out to umpires. That is correct. Yeah. So that I mean that's. Yeah, I, I guess I, just, I, I understand. I understand the host team should pay the assigner and pay the officials. I understand that, but it's not a balanced schedule for all teams in that there's an even number of home and away games such that it all evens out. So why why would we not do like a gentleman's agreement or gentle ladies agreement where if there's only one game, the host team is of course going to pay through arbiter, but why would the visitor not pay half to the host team? In that scenario, it's not always going to balance where I know in our case, we've got more away games than we have home games just because of field availability. So would that not be a better way to handle it? If there's one game, the host team does pay you and that's how you get paid. But the visiting team would have to bring a check to the host school for half the cost. Would that not be a fair way to do that? I, if you're asking me, I'm I'm really an agnostic or ambivalent on it. Can y'all tell that Rob is an, an engineer? By the way, um, <laughs> he's 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 into the details. Um, well, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna have more away games than home games. So yeah, yeah, I got you. It's not it's uh, not gonna work out even for us. You'll be I mean, getting less gate. That's right. But but yeah. I 
yeah, I, however schools, from my perspective, however schools want to work it out between themselves, I don't care. I just, okay. I just want to hold one person response. So I'm, so if an official for one, if two officials at one game, one gets paid, one doesn't, I've got to track back who's, I, it's, it's, it's hard to do. It's difficult to do during, especially well, during the Can season. I throw in something? Yes, Steve. John, um, just to throw in some items to think about, the, uh, the visiting team does travel and the home team doesn't. Yeah. I mean, there, there are some balances that could, could explain it. Um, and then one thing I think I heard, the assigning fee to John is a one-time fee. So we're just talking about oh, the yeah. game fees or the officials' fees. Yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, the idea that the team travels or even travels pretty far, um, it, it can offset for the home team to pay the whole fee. Um, let me I say, mean, too, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, if we're off game, well, any, anything more on the game fees process? Again, whatever you all work out game by game is fine as, as long as I'm holding one team responsible, I guess, is, is the best way to say it. Now, what what uh, Chris Nablock is doing with Kissel is that he's setting up a dummy, well, some of you aren't paying by Arbiter, a dummy game. I don't want any jokes on that. A dummy game. Uh, for the assigner fees. So uh, if you are paying by Arbiter, I can put that in as a game uh, to your bookkeeper or whatever. If not, I, you know, I'll, I'll need to, I guess I need to produce a voucher like I did last year. Or do you want, you all would just want me to do vouchers? I'll need Written. a voucher, like a thing that I can Piece turn into paper to get a okay. PO. Let me just get vouchers out to everybody and you all deal with, with it as, as you wish. Okay, moving on. I'm sorry. So to hang pause. on, John. I want to come back to Rob. Okay. Just a bit here just to talk through this a little bit. So, Rob, let's go back over your comments. So you have more away games than home games. Correct, and everybody's going to be different depending on what their home field. Well, is. most they everybody play. has similar numbers. They're they're close. They're close. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're close. So there are going to be more games where you are not paying for officials than games where you are. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so is there a problem with that particularly? Well, I was saying it's unfair to some of the host teams in that. Well, but remember, the host teams is have good. the gate. I know. I understand. Yeah. So that's where we get stuck is we used to we used to split it up. But really, we have fairly – I mean, it's not exactly, but it's fairly close that everybody has a similar number of home games so they can draw from the gate to pay their officials. So you're actually going to have less games where you're going to pay for officials than you than others may have. But I'll bet you it's not more than one or two. Okay. It, well, it may be, well, maybe, but I, I I'd have to go back and look. But I I think I kept everybody within within two home games of each other. And what Believe can be this? Go ahead. What's this, I'm sorry. This is Jessica from Central. What's the scenario if the second game is two different teams? Is the host team paying for the officials, like the well, official actual host team paying for the officials there, or that's worked out on a case by case basis? Yeah, I, I probably used the wrong <clears throat> term saying host. Um, let's say home team. Home I'm not team, sure okay. what kind of arrangement uh, is made by a second it's the same assignment but it's a, it's two other teams coming into play so it, i would assume that a home team is assigned i've got to come up with a home team and in, in arbiter to make the assignment okay uh, it, did, 
does that answer your question? I, I let's just say home team instead of host team. And got it. Yes, that, that does. I think that's, that's how we've kind of done it in the past. And then that makes sense to continue. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding that correctly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Let me try to. Okay. Assign. Okay. Arbiter and arbiter pay uh, assigning. These are assigning and umpire pay platforms. There's no. I was not aware of any cost to teams. At least it's no cost for you all to be on it. Uh, Chris Niblock uh, buys uh, the Arbiter account to which, now that's not Arbiter Pay, but the Arbiter account um, by which, you know, coaches can check assignments. I make assignments and so on. Uh, that's technically his platform. So um, there's no cost to you all to participate in that and get whatever information you need from that. Um, so I'll need contacts. If nothing has changed on who coaches, who pays, who manages your site, um, then you don't need to tell me, but I'll need an email of some sort if a coach has changed uh, and who to remove and who to put on. So who you want who you want arbiter to email for every game, every for the site for that game, and for whoever's paying the bill. Typically, it's the head coach, JV coach, the AD for the site, and the bookkeeper at the school. But it doesn't have to be that way. And, and John? Yeah. John? Um, yes. And just another, just some kind of an adjustment, the field address, not necessarily the school address. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Now, what, what I'd always tell umpires is a day or two before, they're contacting whoever the contact is just to confirm by email usually. You know, I, just to confirm, I'm going to be there 30 minutes before game time. First game starts at umpty for at local whatever site it is. And so the conscientious umpires, right, Greg, will be contacting Steve. Will be contacting the contact. Um, we get a little umpires get a little printout a day or two before, usually two days before the game. I just copy that forward it to the uh, list of contacts and uh, say, I'm going to be there. Let me know if something changes. Yeah, we I'm get that from Arbiter. Yes. We get that from Arbiter saying the, the schedule and they give us contacts. And what we'll encourage the officials to do is to respond to that, respond to their partner, respond to the, the designated contact names. So to uh, confirm the field, and then, uh, and then state that you can contact the referees or the umpires on that email or with a phone call. Right. And, and in Arbiter, the officials should have their um, names and phone numbers phone at, numbers. at least. Email, yeah, yeah. Um, so give me any changes to, I said games, I should have said teams, contacts. You know, if you want to, if you want to, uh, uh, there, I think we have in our group here in a uh, 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 faculty rep, if you want a faculty rep, if you want a booster club, pre whatever, that's fine. I'll put whoever contacts on it, the site contact and then the bill to contact. That's usually whoever's writing the check or paying by arbiter. Now, when you give me that list and make, I make the check, I can drop people off the list, no problem, but that will have to invite people onto Arbiter, new people. So there's some new head coaches here. If you're not on the contact list and need to be on or watch your title changed or whatever, let me know. Uh, and then uh, you will receive an invitation from Arbiter. I said from us, well, it'll be from me through Arbiter. And that won't probably happen until January sometime. Well, or until you get me your information. And there's just some other notes there. Anything about Arbiter, Arbiter Pay? Who has, who has used it to check games and stuff like that? 
pretty much everybody. Uh, how's it work? I, I don't see it on your end, so I coaches in. Work okay? Just be proactive. Yeah, I, I actually, and, if I don't hear from the umpire, I, I'll reach out to them. Yeah. Ahead of time. Yeah. And I'm sorry that they don't contact you. We uh, we tell them to, but um, hey, man, it happens. Yeah. Uh, all right, moving on. Just to give you an idea, special area considerations. Um, I've got one return. Hopefully, this is hopefully Bowling Green, one returning umpire, possibly two new. I need an experienced umpire on each game. We've got the travel fee involved. E Town. I got a Louisville umpire. Well, Tim McStute, you probably, mm -hmm. uh, you Central Harden folks and E Town folks probably, I don't know if you're tired of him or not, but I, there's some umpires that, that can get to you quickly. Uh, we love McStute. He's great. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, I've got a new umpire in, in E Town. I think she's in E Town. That's where she told me she was. So, um, and then uh, let's see, um, and, but I'd still need to send an experienced umpire there. Um, actually, uh, several new and returning, uh, several returning and new umpires. Uh, UK throws me, the, I, last year I had four or five UK club players. So whenever there was a practice or a game, that just blew up my assignments. Um, I don't know a good way to solve that. That's not your problem, but I'm just telling you. Um, Louisville has uh, many returning and a few new. Um, that's our most experienced pool of umpires. There are many college umpires uh, in Louisville, which sounds neat, but that makes them about half available for, for our high school games. Um, coaches, players, spectators should expect from umpires at games. Just, and if you don't get what you expect, contact me. Um, Steve, is that your ejector? Are you about to be ejected out of your car? No, I was just, I just had to roll my windows up. Oh, okay. Steve works for the Secret Service and, and he, um, uh, he has a, uh, no, I'm teasing. Um, appropriate professional demeanor and conduct. If you don't get it, give me a call and I'll try to address it. Well, I will address it. Uh, appropriate professional uniform and equipment. I I feel like the creepy old guy when I tell young ladies what to wear, but I tell them no yoga pants. Those are undergarments. Uh, so if they wear those skirts or tennis uh, tennis skirts or something, they can wear the yoga pants under them. But if they show up with just yoga pants, they're not supposed to do that. Um. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to pick on the women, but some of them show up in those Daisy Duke shorty shorts. And, and I tell them professional link shorts or skorts. Guys are another issue. Guys are usually, I, I have one that I deal with is kind of sloppy. But I won't say Steve's name. No, it's not Steve. Um, appropriate fitness, appropriate communication with the head coach. Uh, there are times when I um, I get tired of listening to a an assistant coach um, make yell corrections to me. So by rule, all communication comes through head coach or captain on the field. Uh, I don't mind a little give and take, but you get a newer official that can't. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Filter out. Um, uh, a lot of extraneous talk, it gets kind of difficult. So uh, appropriate, well, I, I went the wrong way. Appropriate communication from the official. They shouldn't be yelling back at you, should be calm and anything. Steve, you have anything to add to this? What coaches yeah, should Yeah, I do. Um, no, no, I do. Uh, this is one of the items that I've thought about. So if you have a new official or a nervous official, um, <clears throat> It doesn't help that they get yelled at because they, they get more nervous and then they're probably not going to be able to concentrate. So just record what they're doing. Talk to them directly. If you talk to them directly and say, well, what was that call? Or can you explain that one? 
that's enough for them to understand that maybe they should fix it or think about it. But, but if they get rattled, you, then you don't have an official on the field that's going to be helpful because they're rattled. So it doesn't do any benefit to rattle a, an official. Um, but if you have an issue with them, you can talk to the, their partner or you can just simply state it to them and then report anything that's a little bit too extreme back to John. And then, you know, we can resolve it. But I think at the time of the game, uh, it probably doesn't do your, your team any good to, uh, to get them rattled or get them worked up. So, and, and I say this because when I was younger and I worked with a, an experienced official and they were critiquing me on the field and they gave me more than one thing to think about, that threw me to where now I'm thinking of that one thing and I'm thinking they're watching me doing that one thing and it gets me out of my rhythm. So, um, so I don't, when I'm on a field, I don't instruct other officials much. Uh, I just try to suggest something or ask them and, uh, because they don't need to get rattled. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, the more experienced an official, the more relaxed they are with the give and take. So just kind of, uh, bear with us. Um, we're trying to bring in more officials as you all are. So we need, uh, we need help on that. What the umpire should expect. Again, it's, it's the mirror image. Um, Greg, uh, if you're still on, I saw I had to admit you again. Uh, there is a, we do follow the KHSAA policy on, um, uh, on uh, inappropriate language, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, if something isn't in our bylaws, then we resort to the KHSA. Right, correct. Okay. Now, so if I hear inappropriate language and I can identify who says it, I card it. I, correct. I, there's, there's no, I don't do a verbal warning. I just correct. card and the, the person is off for yellow or red card. Um, correct. So, and I'm not, there's not that big a deal with you all, so with any of your teams or whatever, but I just, just so you know what that is. Um, officials would like the game manager to be identified. It may be the head coach. It's not advised that it's the head coach, uh, but uh, the game manager is whoever's going to handle, like an AD, whoever's going to handle inappropriate behavior by spectators. We, we don't so, need John, so, yeah, Greg. hey, John, so I'll, yeah. I'll just say for the most part, in our league, although I know the AD from Lexington Catholic is on here, the ADs <laughs> generally are not there. Yeah. So it's generally going to be the head coach of the home team. At Lexington Catholic, it will be an AD or an assistant AD. Nada, baby. We yeah, love you, know. Dave. Look, but for the, rest, for the rest of the group, and I'm not saying there are not any other ADs, but generally speaking, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be the home, home coach. Yeah. Um, since we do have an AD on, do uh, you want to say anything, Mr. AD or whatever, uh, about game manager, what the game manager should do to help officials and coaches? Uh, I mean, for us, it's, like he said, we're there for the crowd, the gate, the concession stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, if, they, if they're, People that the umpires need us to address, uh, we you know we we don't want that to fall on our coaches during the game. Right um, now, we also generally have, I mean, we, we'll have an assistant AD or an AD there to run the event. We'll also usually have a school administrator if our student section is going to be there. And I know this year in particular, there's been a lot of students for uh, for all the local schools here in Lexington, at least, go into a lot of games they didn't necessarily go to before COVID. There's been bigger student sections. And I know during, like, for, say, like volleyball and, and soccers, there was a lot of emails back and forth from ADs about, you know, if you guys are on campus and if you know your student section is coming to our place, please make sure there's an administrator there as well. Again, stuff that we'd rather not have to fall on the head coaches or the umpires during the game. Yeah. 
and understood that some some relationships with schools are different. So uh, in the Commonwealth League, uh, safe passage to vehicle. Uh, I've only run across that. I've had over a thousand games girls lacrosse. I've never had that personally, but I've had officials say to me twice while I've been an assigner, <clears throat> they've had some concerns. So whoever's the game manager is going to help them get to their vehicles. Um, Brad, I don't want to open our whole conversation about limitations on people you, uh, you know, staffing. I get what you were saying in an email to me about you just have so many people because you're of your different relationship with your school administration, you know, concessions, gate, uh, and then having people on the table to keep to be the scorekeepers and the timers. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm open to you saying anything about that, but I, I don't know. Officials need somebody there who's keeping time. The, the rules say that if, if there's not a timer and scorekeeper on, on, the, on the field level at a table, there needs to be constant communication or immediate communication back and forth. Hey, Roger, completely 100% agree with what you're saying, but I'm going to have to probably, when it comes to that, follow with the spirit of the rules. Like, yeah. for instance, when it comes to the timer, we're not going to have the person on the field controlling the timer or the score. I'll have a yeah. radio directly talking to the score box, so I'll be able to coordinate working with referees when it comes to uh, alternate possession, uh, score, and things like that. I, yeah. I, I'm just, you know, ahead of time, yeah. I'll be following spirit of the law, not, you know, black and white yeah. with the law. Yeah. That's we're, we'll be with you that will on that. I just, I, it, the less administrative stuff I have to do as an official, the more I can concentrate on play and safety and fairness and stuff like that. And you know that, and so I'm not lecturing you about anything. And I get what you're saying. Um, I don't mind. And the more mature an official is, Greg is probably not the eldest, but the more mature, and Steve can chirp in on that. Questions about rules, not calls or judgments. I'm, if if it's been a kind of a nice outing for me at the venue, I don't mind responding to spectators. Could you explain that question? Now, I've been doing it for a while though, and and I feel comfortable in dealing with that. A new official may not. So, um. I don't mind a little give and take with the assistants, but a new new official may feel uncomfortable. Steve or Greg, anything on that? Questions about rules, not calls or judgment? Nothing? Right. Greg is pondering. Well, I, I, I think for me, it's game to game. Uh, you know, there's, you know, you can set a, a, a statement like don't ever interact with just, you know, just talk to the coach, maybe the assistant coach, don't interact with anyone else. But um, for me, it depends on the game, partly because I guess they're developing teams. Um, and, you know, if, if somebody gets a in, – in, in situation, in a situation where if you can answer the question, it can smooth over some tension. So I think for, for experienced officials, sometimes it works that – you know, you pick and choose your communication. You're managing the game. So, you know, sometimes if you can manage the tension, that, that can help. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, and, and, and quite honestly, sometimes your assistant can be your best friend. <laughs> you, you have to figure that out. I mean, sometimes your assistant can really be a guy that can calm down the head coach a little bit. And if you sense that that's in play – then I get the communication with the, the assistant. If the assistant is going to be the one causing the problem, well, then obviously you're not. I, I generally do not want to get involved with any dialogue with parents or fans as, a, as an official. And if you do, you invite their response. Once you engage, you invite their response. Yeah. And I think you have to be very careful because – if you invite their response, but their response isn't what you want to hear, now you got a problem. And if you react to that, 
you're reacting to something you invited. Fair enough. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not big on that. Okay. I, I hear you. I, I and we'll, we'll just drop, drop it there. That's a, uh, uh, rules interpretations as you're a signer, I'm the rules interpreter for the league. If I need any help, I'll go to, uh, my, my lacrosse whisperer who's Chris in block. Um, but you, I'm pretty good in the book so I can, any rules, questions or interpretations you have as coaches through the season, let me know. Um, Vince gripes and complaints, um, I'll listen to Vince, um, gripes, like if you're wanting, you're, you're really upset with an official or something and just want to criticize him or her, I, I'll, I'll listen and then forget it probably. Um, complaints, if, well, I don't want to say forget it. I'm, event is I'll absorb whatever you want to say and listen, and, and but you're really not wanting me to take any action. I'm just kind of a complaint. You're wanting me to take some action. So I'm going to wait 24 hours when I get a complaint before I respond. I may send you an email. Thank you. I'll get back with you in 24 hours. I'll talk with everyone, the umpires, whoever's involved in a particular situation. Uh, if necessary, I'll get written statements. If you have video, um, I had a non-Commonwealth League coach send me a whole half of a video and a, and a running narrative, or not narrative, but a written script on about 24 things she wanted to criticize. Videos are really hard in girls lacrosse to actually see what's happening. Um, it's more of an in the moment thing, but if you got video, I'll take it. Uh, and then anyone who's involved in the complaint gets a copy. So um, if I have to take corrective action, with an official, I'll, I'll usually, it'll usually be in writing that I'll need to address, I'll need to speak with the officials and then I'll speak with them specifically about an issue. So any, any problems, uh, give me a yell. I, I won't ignore you. I didn't want to suggest that, but, um, Steve, anything else on that? No, I don't have anything. Okay. All right. If you got a problem, a complaint, let me know. All right. I was going to say, uh, take a break. We're into this an hour. Anything, any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you need from me? Will you send us, the, this is Annie from Lafayette. Yeah. Will you send us an email that has the date of the rules interpretation meeting so we can go ahead and get that on our calendars? Which one is? Um, yeah. I, as soon as I find that out from Chris Niblock. He's the uh, club training coordinator. So he's the one that I, we, we sat down and talked and, and we sketched out. He sketched out and I said, I blessed it. Um, I mean, as much as I can, uh, the schedule, but I can't remember if he, Steve, did he um, communicate to you the rules interpretations, which was Lexington and which was Louisville? No, I haven't talked to him yet. Um, we're meeting, and then we're going to meet with you guys right afterwards. You guys are who? Uh, you and Chris and possibly Mary. Okay. And the, oh, board, okay. And the board. So okay. you, you did send out one. It's in my email. I don't know exactly what it is, but instead of guessing, um, let's just make it solid, and then we can send it out yeah. as soon as we can. Perfect. Can you send out the presentation slides or PDF? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm recording this. I should have anyway. If not, I'm going to, I'll, I'll get this PowerPoint. Uh, I don't know. I don't see the little icon that says it's recording. I meant to push that. But... Okay. I mean, it's, I slide that help. Yeah. it's recording. It is. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, yeah. I just, matter of fact, I just posted uh, on YouTube the one that I did at four o'clock for new umpires. So I can turn that, that around quickly. And then Greg, you'll have to let me know what to do about those who have not attended. Fire them. Yeah. 
Who needs do we have a do, do do we have a uh, a list of all those who are attending? Uh, I have emails of people who said they are. I don't know. Well, we can look back on the recording and I'll I'll check it out. We have a couple of uh, uh, I, I know I know Lisa from Bowling Green obviously had some problems with uh, connectivity and obviously what's going on down there. You know. Mm hmm. Oh it's yeah, just so, yeah. It's just so sad. Just yeah. so sad. Yeah. So, first things first. Nice compassion, Greg. I I forgot to mention that. I meant to. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, anything else, anybody? All right. Well, let's go forth and do long division. That's a little <laughs> biblical reference. Greg got it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I failed that of course. <laughs> Well, you're a Catholic. You didn't need to know the Bible. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That people won't understand that. I, I apologize. You better be careful, John. You're gonna That's have to a little... up this buddy boy. <laughs> That's all a... right, gang. Hey, all right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, John. No, sorry. Hey, yeah. hang on a second. Can I jump in for a second? Sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry. One last thing. Um. Uh, about the fields. When fields are pretty well marked and lined, and well, even just cones, uh, makes it easier. Uh, for the game to be called uh, as best you can. Uh, we work with any field, but if the fields are as marked as clear as possible, um, I've done games where it's hard to see the 12 and the eight and when you have to, or the uh, goal circle. So when you have to kind of scrutinize where those lines are, you take your eyes off of the, of the bigger picture. So it's nicer when those lines are bright and easy to see. If possible. Yep. That's all for me. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Let's get out of here.